What's up everybody, I hope you're doing well. So in recent years, the highly sensitive person trait, or HSP for short, increasingly has come into public awareness. And with good reason. Research by Dr. Elaine Aaron has made clear that 15 to 20% of the population embodies this trait. And guess what? That statistic applies to therapists as well. Now, even amongst therapists, it can be tempting to see sensitivity as a deficit that impairs one's ability to be successful given the way that our world is set up. And I know therapists who fear that being an HSP might impair their ability to be successful as a therapist, let alone as a therapist in private practice. But not so fast. As an HSP myself, I know that it's possible to run a private practice and thrive as a human being as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can leverage the HSP trait to help your practice. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. If you're not familiar with the HSP trait, even if you're not HSP yourself, it is worth learning a bit about the trait. In all likelihood, at least 15% of the clients in your practice embody this trait, if not more, because HSPs process both the good and the bad in a more sensitive way than your average person. So there's a chance that you have a significant number of HSPs in your practice. I've put links in the description box with more information about the HSP trait, as well as the HSP self-test if you're interested in finding out where you fall on there. So as an HSP myself, the best way I can sum up the trait is to say that all five senses, as well as that sort of sixth sense of your gut intuition, are all more heightened than the average person. So caffeine makes me more jittery than most people. I have to actively avoid rated R movies or else I'm gonna have nightmares sometimes for years. I'm also ridiculously aware of everything that's going on in my body and like if something's itchy, it's gonna, ooh, hmm, can't handle it. And like most HSPs, I'm keenly aware of what people are feeling and what they're needing most of the time. Now it might be tempting to think that because HSPs feel things so intensely, it really wouldn't make sense to put us in the therapist chair. I mean, you might be thinking, Marie, if you can't handle rated R movies, how can you handle the real content happening in the office? Well, for me at least, the fact that that content is real and I'm able to make a difference is the key difference between that and watching a potentially fictional rated R movie designed for entertainment. So when harnessed well, HSPs can use their sensitivity to sense exactly what's going on for a client and to deeply empathize with their feelings. I mean, we can pick up on some ridiculously minute cues from our clients that the average person might miss. So from my perspective, being highly sensitive is a superpower. But of course, just like any superpower, HSPs have their kryptonite. Our kryptonite is feeling pressured, overworked, and overstimulated. Our senses can fry much faster than everyone else's, so we have to have incredibly firm boundaries in order to thrive. Now, as you all know already, being a therapist can be incredibly rigorous. And from my own experience working at an agency while I was still a trainee, I found that incredibly overstimulating. The structure of my day-to-day -day was so much pressure and so intense that I was completely fried on a daily basis and I just had to push through it. While working within that structure, there just wasn't really a way to tend to my sensitive nature. Now, let me be clear that I'm not at all trying to say that HSPs can't thrive while working in an agency setting, but for me, I personally wasn't able to find a way to do that. So for me, the option of being able to work in private practice created a possibility for me to thrive as an HSP. Because I work for myself, I can set my own schedule, I don't have productivity quotas, I don't have deadlines to make, I can decide if in a certain season it's too overwhelming and so I need to see fewer clients for that time, and I can also make decisions specifically about what kinds of clients I work with to make sure I don't get too overstimulated. So if you happen to also be an HSP, here are some tools you can use to leverage your sensitivity as an asset and grow your practice. First, find out what your unique superpower is and leverage it as part of your niche. So for example, I have this uncanny knack for generally knowing what someone is feeling even if they feel like they don't know what they're feeling. So I'm really able to help people put words to what's going on for them because somehow in my gut, I just kind of know what they're feeling. It's not based on science, but uh, I'm sure just somehow my brain is picking up on some cues and I don't even know what they are, but I just know it. That's what makes it a superpower. You just can't quite pin it down exactly. Second, identify the type of person you get 
the best and consider a highly targeted approach of only working with this kind of person. This is because when we feel like we have a good grasp or understanding of a particular context, experience, etc., a lot of times we experience it less intensely as a result and therefore we can sustain working with a lot more people experiencing that thing. Third, Give yourself the freedom to split your productive hours so that you're not being a therapist all the time. Find out what you're drawn to because your sensitive nature probably needs something else to kind of help you refuel so that you can exert that energy as a therapist. And if it's something that you want, it's likely possible to monetize whatever it is you're doing, spending the rest of your productive hours doing. I mean, that's kind of exactly what I'm doing with private practice skills. I'm just saying it's possible. Number four, give yourself permission to set up a fee structure that's sustainable for you to thrive. So if you need to, you may need to consider setting up a cash only practice so that you don't have to see as many clients. I remember for me, when I was still accepting insurance, I needed to see far more clients than I was able to healthily sustain. And so by having a cash only practice, I can have the same income while working with fewer clients and I'm a much better therapist for it. And number five, if it's a good fit for you, you could consider specializing in working with HSPs. I'm sure your clients will appreciate that you understand what they're going through better than anyone else, and it's possible that you might find it a little bit easier to sustain as well. Well, this is just a list to get things started. Ultimately, HSPs everywhere, whether you're a therapist or not, need to think outside of the box in order to find a way to thrive in a world that doesn't especially cater to sensitivity. Now, the key is accepting that your sensitivity is a superpower and that there is a need somewhere that you can fill while still being able to thrive. And you might find it helpful to connect with other therapists with the HSP trait as well, so you can help each other kind of brainstorm thinking outside of the box while also lifting up each other's awesome superpower. And whatever you do, do not beat yourself up for being too sensitive. Believe me, I've tried growing thicker skin, I've told myself that my sensitivity is only a burden, and that gets you nowhere good fast. So until you can accept that sensitivity is there to stay and is a good part of who you are, you're not gonna have an easy time moving forward. Whether you're highly sensitive or not, I hope you found this video helpful so that you have a better understanding of what the experience is like to be so sensitive and to be able to see it as an asset. And if you are HSP, let me know in the comments what sorts of tools you found helpful in order to thrive while working in private practice. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. This video is brought to you by therapynotes.com. Not only does Therapy Notes help with scheduling notes and billing, they also now have a telehealth beta platform. Yes, that's right. That means you can meet with your clients remotely via a HIPAA secure platform. If you click the link in the description of this video, you can get two months to try all these features for free, including their telehealth beta platform. So give it a try and I hope you like it.